What's going on everybody? First, I just want to address the elephant in the room. President Trump was just shot. It looks like he was shot in the ear and I wasn't going to release this story until I knew if he was okay or not, but they did say that he is okay and that is the only reason that I am still dropping this story tonight. Now, I don't care if you lean left or right or whatever. Just keep your political views to yourself and we're good. But if you could drop a prayer for him, just like any other world leader, I'd be asking you to do the same thing. It would mean a lot. But welcome back to Mystery Files. And today I have a great story for you. And tomorrow I will be actually uploading another story. So that means this week, this weekend, you get two stories. But for today you have this story and I hope you really enjoy it. And please, it seems like YouTube only cares about likes. It doesn't care about subscribers or shares or anything else. So please just make sure to like this video and let's get this up to 60 likes. And if we get the next four videos up to 60 likes in a row, I will start uploading twice a week. Isn't that a reason enough just to hit it right now? But without any further ado, as of now, it's time to slip into a mind that's not our own. Let's go. On a chilly spring evening in the 1800s, a wise and introspective man was plagued by a very disturbing dream. And this man was known for his sharp intellect and his heavy burden of responsibility. And he shared this dream with his wife and a few close friends, unable to shake the sense of this impending doom that it carried. And little did he know, this dream would actually mirror the events that would soon come to unfold. Abe, as his friends called him, had always been attuned with his thoughts and emotions. His dreams often provided insight and clarity, but this particular dream, vivid and haunting, left him deeply unsettled. One late evening, after waiting anxiously for this important news, Abe retired to bed because he was absolutely exhausted and he quickly fell into a deep sleep, only to be awakened by the sound of this soft, muffled sobbing. And the mournful cries seemed to come from him all around, echoing through the empty corridors of his home. So at this point, he is alarmed and puzzled, so he arises from his bed and he began to wander around through the dimly lit rooms. Because remember, in the 1800s, there wasn't electricity, well, not like there is today, I mean, the electricity today, how we know it, didn't come into play until about the 1920s. So there were no flashlights, just a lantern. He had to look around this absolutely huge home. And the sobbing kind of grew louder and even more anguished with every step that he took. But every corner that he turned, every door that he opened, revealed nothing but this eerie silence. At this point, determined to uncover this mystery, he continued his search until he arrived at the Grand Hall, its vastness amplified by the silence and the shadows. But then, in the center of the room, he was met with this chilling sight. A decorated wooden framework that was supporting a coffin stood there solemnly. It was draped in funeral vestments and upon it lay a corpse, shrouded and still. Plus, there were these soldiers that stood guard to this tomb, and their faces set in the somber vigilance. Surrounding them were these mourners, their faces etched with grief. Some were crying and some weren't, others just standing in this silent sorrow. Overcome with dread, at this point he approached one of the soldiers. Who was dead? He said, with his voice literally trembling with the weight of his premonition. The soldier's reply was stark and final. The most important man in the world. He was killed by an assassin. At that moment, a collective wail of anguish just rose up through the crowd, a sound so heart-wrenching that it literally jolted Abe awake. Yes, it was a dream, and this dream left a deep impression on him. And even though he tried to dismiss it as maybe a figment of his imagination or something, the foreboding that it carried just lingered in his mind. Despite his attempts to reassure his wife and friends that it was just a dream, you could tell that the unease in him remained palpable. And in fact, the more that he thought about it, the more that he felt a strange connection between the dream and his waking life. 
In, in the days that followed the dream, he just couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was actually about to happen. He even shared the details with a very close friend, describing how he had heard these sobs wandering through these familiar rooms, only to find a corpse that was guarded by these soldiers, mourned by these unseen weepers. His friend at this point was equally disturbed, and he tried to comfort him, suggesting, you know, it was merely a manifestation of his anxieties. But the dream continued to haunt him. He found himself replaying the scene over and over in his mind, unable to escape the sense of dread that it had now installed in him. And clearly, he tried to go about his daily duties, but the ominous feeling just cast this shadow over every single thing that he did. Three days later, Abe, to get his mind off things, attended a play at a theater. And as he sat in his little private box and just enjoying the performance, finally with his mind not thinking about the premonition, the events of this dream lurked in the back of his mind all of a sudden. And then suddenly, a figure crept up right behind him. And it was this random man, a man driven by this hatred and desperation, armed with only a pistol and fired one single fatal shot. The sharp crack of the gunshot shattered the evening's calm that was before. And Abe slumped forward, mortally wounded. In the aftermath of this tragedy, the nation was plunged into mourning. The dream that so vividly haunted Abe in his final days had become a chilling reality. His body was then placed in a coffin and brought back to the very room that he had seen in his sleep, the East Room of the White House. There, surrounded by guards, soldiers, and mourners, just as in his dream, the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, lay in state. I bet now you understand why his house had a grand hall in it, because that house was actually the White House. And the theater he was at was Ford Theater. And the man that shot him in the back of the head, his name was John Wilkes Booth. And when troops from the New York Cavalry finally located him, he was in this barn in Northern Virginia during the early morning on April 26th, 1985. And they ended up setting the structure on fire to force Booth to exit. And when he did, he was shot. And he ended up dying later that day. The premonition that Abraham Lincoln had experienced had eerily foretold the tragic end that awaited him. His dream, once dismissed as this unsettling vision, became a haunting testament to the mysterious interplay between dreams and reality and destiny. And this story even gives me the chills even more after what almost happened today. So you know make sure to like this video and turn on all your notifications so when the next story tomorrow comes out you get notified but that's all i got for you guys but if you're still itching for another story of the mysterious twisted or the paranormal click right over here because like always i got you that's all i got for you guys cheers